this is the city as it was only yesterday. Then at 8.52 a.m., the Earth showed one devastating moment. Now, this is the city. A graveyard without limits. men are part of an emergency squad flown in by the international relief agencies to do what they must. To stop the spread of disease, the ruins must be flattened and leveled, as though the city never existed. A city of the dead. Yet what do we who live really know of the dead? I mean, for certain. Well, we have one scientifically positive way of knowing who they were. For a long time, science has known, beyond any question of doubt, that no two sets of fingerprints can be alike. But experts who will examine these prints will say they are identical. But they can't be. They can't possibly be. make sense. What an earthquake can't finish, we finish. I wonder if there's any people under that lot out there. I'm sure there are. I meant still alive. It's been 12 days now. I was at Casino. I mean to say I've seen a real beat up place, but <laughs> bombs and guns can't touch this lot here. One minute you've got a city of 50,000 people minding their own business, and the next minute, wallop. Stand clear! You're a talker, you know that. Why should we add an insult to injury? Because in four hours the bulldozers move in and we got to get it neat and tidy for them. Okay? Okay. Is that or the plague? Oh, it's a loose connection. This time it'll go boom. Now what? Do you hear anything? What's there to hear? Flies? You've got a very nasty manner, Tom. A very nasty manner indeed. It's no picnic for any of us. Oh, gee, I did hear something. I don't know what it was, but it was something. Like what? Well, like something. It came from out there. You better get back to camp and lie down for a few hours. No, no, wait, wait. I tell you, there was something. And it came from out there. You heard a rat. Every good city has its rats. You heard a lucky rat. Look, if there was something. Uh, wait, wait, just a minute. It came from out there. I tell you, I did hear something. All right. Both listen. Nothing. Come for us. I knew it was something. I heard him calling. Oh, no, sir. He told us we mustn't. The vibration of our voices would cause everything to fall upon us, so he said. Watch yourself, Tom. Here to that side. We knew you would come for us. I knew it was something. I heard him calling. Oh, no, sir. He told us we mustn't. 
the vibration of our voices would cause everything to fall upon us, so he said. Watch yourself, Tom. Careful, that's right. Oh, thank you. We were told this would happen. Who by? By him. He is dead now. He died with... When you started digging for us. Oh, come on, let's get out of here, fast. Come on, kid, quick. This place is going to cave in in a second now. I will get her. He oh, kept no, us... Oh, He kept us alive. Okay, She's saying goodbye to him. Come, darling. Come. Let me come. Now, there, darling. Come on, my love. Put oh. it down. One of your teachers? No, we never saw him before. I think he was an American. Careful now. Careful. When the earthquake started, he must have been passing in the street and then rushing here for protection. I cannot begin to tell you what he did for us. There was no food or water, of course. Our cries could not be heard. But he would not let us die. He joked. He was tender. He forced us to live. And all the time he was dying. Hey, come on! I'm coming. Come on, father. Watch your head there. Don't worry now, I've got you. I'm a big man, huh? <laughs> Give me a hand, father. That's it. Come on now. Who's that? All right. There's a guy down here dead. An American. Come on. Got nothing on him. No passport, nothing. Maybe he's got people back home. How do they know what happened to him? Hadley, what are you doing? I can get a fingerprint. Maybe we can find out who he was. Come on! Hey, come on, come on! The place is gonna cave in in a minute. Sorry to have kept you waiting so long, Mr. Hadley. A warden's a lot like a nursemaid. All right, warden. Here's this letter I told you about. Oh, yeah. Won't you sit down? You sounded quite hysterical on the phone. Well, I must have a complete fool working in that fingerprint department. I could kick myself from here to the moon and back forever getting mixed up in this. Yeah, they seem quite definite about it, don't they? Our files indicate the thumbprint submitted though an imperfect impression is that of Jerome S. Cole, convicted of first-degree murder on June 23, 1935, and transferred to the state prison on June 28th of that year to await execution. How about that? I told you on the phone. I took those prints off a man that died in an earthquake a month ago, 6,000 miles from here. Yeah, I know what you told me. When I finished my work out there and got back to the States, I was worried about it. Thought maybe, maybe I could do something for him. Mm. Look what happens. Oh, excuse me. This the man? Yeah. But it can't be. Let's this Cole have the twin brother. He didn't have. Someone that looks just like him then. And the same fingerprints? But how in the world could he... I don't know. I can tell you what I do know. He was scheduled to die September the 21st, 1937, for brutally killing a man during a robbery. Cole had been scheduled to die five other times before, but each time the governor or the courts gave him a stay. Now he had less than 12 hours to live. He was a smart, tough little man. Now, if you, uh, in your opinion, uh, do you think that Cole should be granted a reprieve? I think he should have a reprieve. He's had full reprieve. I think he ought to be fired. Isn't that something, huh? I mean, uh, all those people in front of the prison? There's a guy interviewing them says there's thousands. A few hundred. I think I don't think anybody should have a reprieve. These guys always exaggerate, don't they? I think he's suffered enough. I think he's carrying all kinds of signs, huh? Oh, yeah. Save the noble Mr. Cole. He must be replaced. Look, who said I was noble? I've done a hundred rotten things. A man can have a change of heart, can he? Yeah. This is the place to have it. How long have you been in jail already? I'm going to 
miss the old warden. There's a man from the head of the Blind Association in my office. He needs a signature of these forms. Sure. Here. You act like it's nothing. You know the two people are going to be able to see again because I signed this little paper? Yes, and I'm sure your lawyer will see the afternoon papers carry the full story. Your body for cancer research. Your brain for psychological investigations. The corneas of your eyes for the blind. Get off my back. Oh, I admire that little touch last time. It was just before you got your fourth stay of execution, wasn't it? Leaving whatever money you had to a juvenile home. So as other misguided lads wouldn't end up like you. You're going to do so much for suffering humanity after you're dead. But if I tried, I could convince you how sincere I really am. Don't. I won't. Because you couldn't keep me alive for three minutes past ten o'clock. But the governor can. And he's elected by the people. Like those people outside, for instance? For instance? You know that a 17-year-old girl is going to get one of my eyes? A poor blind kid? Look, Warden. Sam has shaved my head so many times, my scalp's sore. Can he wait? For what? I've still got plenty of time. Well, the radio says there's two lawyers with the governor right this minute. Petitions with 20,000 signatures. A guy in Copenhagen even offered to take my place. Cut his hair. Sir, your office on the phone. Governor's secretary wants to talk to you. Take it on that extension. Residence? Be it ever so humble. Now you've been getting bags of mail. Oh, well, they'll forget all about me now. Excuse me. I would send them on, but we have rules about the amount of mail regular prisoners can receive. Burn them. No, I did save one letter for you. That 17 year old girl who was going to get one of your eye corneas. Her mother wrote it for her. I'm talking to you. Dear Mr. Cole, my mother is writing this letter for me. I had to let you know how happy I am that your life was spared and to thank you so much for what you wanted to do for me. I have heard so many wonderful things about you on the radio. It is so wonderful that after committing a mortal sin, you found your soul while waiting to die. Instead of being bitter and afraid as I often am, you thought only of others. Oh, you love this bit. You've sure proven that you can find the meaning of life only when you reach out to another human being and try to ease his sufferings. Mr. Cole, a person like you makes one truly believe in the power of the spirit in the human soul. Sincerely, Emily Fraser. Age 17. If you'd like to reply, I'll give you permission. It's all yours, Warden. Oh, no. It's all yours, Mr. Cole. Guard! What's 
this. Warden says it's yours. He said you probably wouldn't have the guts to look at it. He did, huh? He's got me all figured out, hasn't he? Well, you tell him I like it. Tell him it goes well with the furnishings. Dear Mr. Cole, my mother is writing this letter for me. I had to let you know how happy I am that your life was spared and to thank you so much for what you wanted to do for me. I've heard so many wonderful things about you on the radio. It's so wonderful that after committing a mortal sin, you found your soul while waiting to die. Instead of being bitter and afraid, as I often am, you thought only of others. You've sure proven that you can find the meaning of life only when you reach out to another human being and try to ease his suffering. Mr. Cole, a person like you makes one truly believe in the power of the spirit in the human soul. Sincerely, Emily Fraser. Thank you so much for what you wanted to do for me. Thank you so much for what you wanted to do for me. Dear Mr. Cole, dear Mr. Cole, dear Mr. Cole, no! Mr. Cole, a person like you makes one truly believe. A person like you makes one truly believe. A person like you makes one truly believe. Truly believe. A little solitary helped you control your temper? Take him back to his regular cell. And back to the letter, huh? In a nice new frame? Why does the letter bother you so much? You should be flattered. The person she describes is practically a saint. Listen, Warden. I can't look at it anymore. You don't have to. I've taken it away. Oh, I'm trying to make it easier for you. Why aren't you in bed? Dear Mr. Come on, come on, hit the Dear sack. Mr. Cole, thank you so much for what you wanted to do for me. Thank you so much for what you wanted to do for me. A person like you, a person like you. You know the rules. You thought only of others. You Don't thought you? only of others. Don't be ridiculous. What do you mean ridiculous? It's out of the question. Why? One eye is all I need for all the swell things I can see around here. Besides, with me, it'll be in all the papers. Well, sure, I might even get myself a parole. Cole gives one eye to a blind girl. Looked like a butte the last time. I'll say it did. Prison board wouldn't allow it. Look, Warden. I read somewhere that some of the guys in one of the prisons, uh, well, they volunteered to let some of the doctors experiment on them with new medicines. Yeah? Well, I, I was wondering if there's any chance of that happening around here. I don't know. I've heard nothing about it. Okay. Cole. Funny, isn't it? A child can say a truth that none of us would dare put into words. Look, I don't want to hear anything about her. I don't care what happens to her. I mean, when I got that letter from the fingerprint people, I... Well, I can't even tell you what I thought. Like I was involved with a ghost or something. Well, I guess there's a logical explanation for everything. Two and two still makes four. Well, I... won't take up any more of your time, Warden. I'd like to thank well, you. Well, now... 
You're not the first person to have seen Cole. Twelve years ago, I received a letter from an ex-convict who swore he saw Cole helping fight a tenement fire in a slum just outside Rome. Four years ago, a news magazine carried a little item about a stranger who appeared in a village in the mountains of central Mexico. Cholera had broken out. The way this man helped, well, the villagers, they just made him a god. Then in the midst of it all, he vanished. The description of him, thick set, short black hair, about 35. But the most peculiar thing about him were his eyes, light blue, with an odd kind of stare. Warden, that could have been almost anybody. Oh, no. It was he. And I just wonder how many other places he has appeared as a stranger. What do you mean? That's why I asked you to fly up here. Cole has been on my mind for a long time. Even if it's not for publication, I, I guess you're not sorry he escaped. Did I say he escaped? seconds after he fell. How could he have died then? I saw him die a month ago. I felt him. I touched him. On your way to the airport, have the driver stop for a minute at the Forest Glen Cemetery. His tombstone is near the south wall. I've stood there wondering more than once. Jerome Cole, born July 7, 1907, died January 14, 1938. Rest in peace. That's impossible. Yeah. I know. This is the thumbprint of Jerome Cole, who died in state prison in 1938. This is the thumbprint of a stranger found dead in a cellar 6,000 miles from state prison less than a year ago. Though this one is smudged, it is identical with this one. But we know that no two men can possibly have the same thumbprint. However, that which seems impossible to have happened once, apparently, has happened twice. This is a news article dated May 3rd, 1955. The Brazilian police recently arrested Juan Moreno of Sao Paulo on a charge of armed robbery. They took Juan's fingerprints, and to their amazement, they found they were identical with those of a man who had been hanged for murder in Argentina nine years before. The hanged man's name was also Juan Moreno, and if he had lived, he would have been the same age as the man under arrest serving his time in prison. Explain it? We couldn't possibly even try. 